continue to bring you conversations on current so what's happening what's happening uh, in the country now lumpy skin disease has been a recurring challenge in namibia with recent outbreaks highlighting its economic and veterinary impacts there has been reports of lumpy skin disease outbreaks in livestock uh, in certain parts of namibia for an update on this highly infectious viral disease, we are now joined by Dr. Meunai Kartura, a veterinarian and a lecturer at the University of Namibia. Very good morning to you, doctor. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning and good morning to listeners. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Perhaps for those who might not know, um, give us an overview of uh, what lumpy skin disease is and what actually it does to, uh, to livestock. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you very much for the question. Mm -hmm. Um, lumpy skin disease, um, shortly known as LSD, mm -hmm. um, it's a viral disease caused by pox or the family of pox virus yeah. um, that affects cattle as well as water buffaloes. Um, it spreads very fast. Yeah. It's clinical signs that one will see is basically the lumps that are seen on the skin. Um, apart from that, uh, a cow that is infected will, will have a fever mm -hmm. um, and also farmers will see some swelling mm -hmm. just at the extremities on the legs, uh, the brisket area uh, as some clinical signs. The disease is, uh, or the virus itself is transmitted by um, uh, biting flies, mm -hmm. especially mosquitoes, um, as well as some um, uh, ticks. Yeah. It can also be transmitted through direct contact with an infected um, animal. Um, so that is the main source of transmission. There is also mechanical transmission. Yeah. So a person that come in contact with an infected uh, cow, if it touches that cow and go and touch an, a non-infected cow, will definitely show some, uh, they, they can be able to transmit the disease. Now. Um, the prevention or control of the particle of this disease mm. is based on vaccination. Yeah. So you need to vaccinate and during outbreak you have uh, restrictions, uh, livestock movement restrictions and active vaccination, as well as uh, dipping or spray controlling of external parasites. Right. That's in, in short um, what I can say about lumpy skin disease. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the outbreaks and the confirmed cases uh, and, and perhaps in which parts of the country uh, has these cases been more uh, prevalent and uh, especially with, with the lumpy skin disease. We have heard in the, in the, in the early on, uh, earlier in the year that the, the, a certain part of the country, especially in the north, your poor side, there have been also reports there. Uh, which other parts can you sh share with us have been of course mostly affected uh, with this uh, lumpy skin disease? Yeah, well, well, um, lumpy skin disease is a notifiable disease. In other words, it's a disease that should, should a farmer detect it, should be able to be reported to the nearest state veterinary office. Mm -hmm. So it must be controlled by Directorate of Veterinary Services. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular outbreak started last year um, in, in June. That's when it started in the Chodonjupa region. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, as I have said that uh, the disease itself, main, the main transmission is uh, uh, biting flies. Remember that June was now a bit cold. Yeah. So we we're a bit uh, skeptical what could be the cause of this, how is the disease transmitting and so forth, but that is all spreading. But that is how the, the matter is. But then during rainfall, yeah. the situation becomes a bit uh, difficult, uh, even though uh, the veterinary services has been trying to vaccinate, trying to control the disease, yeah. but it has now spread uh, from Ochodonjupa going to Maheke region. Um, so it's already in Comas and Erongo region. Mm -hmm. um, as confirmed cases, uh, there has been uh, reports, even though they are not yet uh, confirmed, uh, in the northern communal areas, um, as well as Opuo, uh, where the disease is also present. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's basically, one could say that it's now uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, as I've said, that the, one of the key things is, is the complexity of how the disease is uh, transmitting in the sense that yeah. um, there is now rainfall uh, happening and so there is presence and increased uh, number of uh, 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 mosquitoes yeah. around yeah. and that help with the spread of the disease. Mm. And because uh, there is also plenty of uh, water running around, animals are not really coming to homesteads where one can really see that this particular animal is sick so that you can, at least you can be able to uh, assist. So they are just there in the field. You only see 
it I say about two or three weeks or even a month later. Yeah. So by then the situation is a bit uh, worse. Of course, the disease itself does also cause a bit of um, some animals normally die from the from the disease. And this is the co the key thing is that once the virus enter the the, the animal itself, the immune system of uh, the, the animals normally go down. So opportunistic uh, infection normally takes place yeah. where you tend to find some animals going to, towards the end of even dying from, from the disease mm. is what we are experiencing now. Yeah. So there is vaccination uh, going on, but also some farmers are, have started now trying to do the treatment of, of this particular disease. Yes. Absolutely, and it's really becoming an issue for many farmers. Uh, you're, you've mentioned now some of the, 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 the measures to curb this disease, mm -hmm. of course, vaccination um, and also dipping uh, and, and, and so much more. Um, the, but then there's a distinction between communal farmers and commercial farmers and the challenges they also uh, persist to each. Um, for instance, for communal farmers who sometimes would not have the resources or the funds to you know of course take care of them to, to take care of these animals in that in that way perhaps your advice to them and how they can also help you know prevent this disease and also if there if there is perhaps a consultation being done with communal farmers to also make to take note of what exactly this disease is and how they can curb it yeah what i've what i've seen is that uh, i should commend the directorate of veterinary services yeah as I've said that this disease is uh, notifiable, um, as soon as it was detected in Chedonjipa last year, yeah. uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and uh, Land Reform um, undertook, under, uh, under the Directorate of Veterinary Services, undertook a trip to investigate the cases. Mm. And, um, and as soon as they confirmed that it's an outbreak of uh, lumpy skin disease, vaccination uh, campaign has started in those areas. Mm. Um, as I've said, that it, it, the state has to control the disease. Yeah. Um, even though vaccination has really started, um, we also have another challenge, and that is farmers. The fear of farmers reporting the disease mm -hmm. are way in advance for veterinarians to come in and assist. That, is, that gap there is really taking a, a, a toll yeah. to an extent where by the time when they try to report to the nearest state veterinary office, uh, the disease has already spread. So that is also another challenge. The other challenge is the rainfall that, that we have indicated. Yeah. Some roads are very difficult uh, to pass by mm. and not all animals are presented for vaccination because of the water sources that are all over. So that makes it also a challenge for one to really say that you will vaccinate 100%. Mm. But um, the, 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 um, what we have seen, the vaccination activities or campaign that is under, undertaken by the Territory of Veterinary um, services is very awesome is very is something that one can really comment yeah. the hard working that they are really doing especially knowing the harsh environment that they are really working on but they are really trying to try to keep uh, the disease so that at least it, it's under control very well do you understanding doctor what what is the economic impact of uh, lumpy skin disease on namibian farmers here look uh, what one will see is that there is no restriction of livestock movement yes uh, some farmers depend on these um, livestock for say for sale yeah. and so forth so there is no selling taking place in this area mm. however um, other arrangements have been made such as um, selling of small stock just to try to assist farmers with that um, when an animal get infected with uh, with with this uh, virus especially if it's a bull uh, its fertility is also affected so there is a uh, uh, either complete or incomplete fertility that normally takes place. I see. And so that already affects the reproduction of um, livestock. And uh, secondly, the height is also affected. So the skin is basically affected because of the lumps mm. that, are, that are on the skin, which tend to take a bit longer to heal. And at times, if they, if they heal, there are some marks that are also left on the skin. So the skin quality is also affected. So the tenneries, if you sell a cow, the tenneries themselves will not be able to accept the skin. Yeah. So that also affect um, uh, livestock. Mm -hmm. And uh, thirdly, the important thing is also during, there are some certain countries that don't really expect or receive animals. So if there's an outbreak, you can't really export even just live animals. Yeah. 
to those specific countries because of these requirements that at least there must not be an outbreak of lumpy skin disease. So that affect the economy of the country as well as the economy of the of the farmer as, a, as an individual. Very well. There yes. are also questions being raised whether, uh, you know, if, if humans can also catch this lumpy skin because I, I, now to your understanding, you know, our conversation earlier, you'd mentioned that, you know, if a human touches a, 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 a a animal that is infected with lumpy skin and touches another animal that can also transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, but can this disease affect humans? No, it, it cannot affect humans. Humans are not affected. Mm -hmm. um, they, are, they are not affected, yes. Yeah. And also another question is, is, is uh, consuming this anim animals that have lumpy skin. How, what, are there any dangers in doing this? Because uh, traditionally when, a, when an animal dies, it's humans or rather farmers uh, who are of course farming for, for communal purposes would rather use that for you know for consumption uh, is that a safe procedure to do yeah from public health point of view uh, it is not advisable to eat any animal or meat from an animal that has died yeah. uh, from unknown causes yeah. so hence the advice will be not to consume that um, as I've said that uh, if an animal get infected with this virus mm. their immune system normally reduces so what they normally get another secondary bacterial infection, which might be harmful to a, to a person. And hence, there's other complexities that normally comes in that might affect, even though what we have said that the, the, the virus itself does not affect humans, but the other secondary infections might. So hence, uh, I will not advise people to consume meat from an animal that is suspect that died as a result of or suspected died from uh, lumpy skin disease. Very well, doctor. Yeah. Now, moving forward, what is your advice to farmers, uh, especially um, for those who have not uh, perhaps gotten the, 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 uh, the, the pleasure of uh, getting what has been given by the Directorate of Veterinary Services, uh, you know, the, the vaccination program that has been launched by them, but has been uh, uh, spread out to farmers? Um, my advice, the first one is that if you can, please vaccinate your animals. Yeah. You must vaccinate your animals. Um, the second thing is that if you, if you find positive cases, or if you find the clinical pictures that, that this, you suspect that this is lumpy skin disease, please report to the nearest uh, state veterinary office so that they can come into investigation. It doesn't really help for a farmer to hide the disease as the, the, the impact that it has on livestock is very huge and uh, the earlier uh, the disease is reported the better it is for one to to cap the the, the, the outbreak um that is uh, another thing so if you can vaccinate yeah. um even though um the director of veterinary services is also continuously vaccinating assisting farmers with the vaccine um if there is a positive or a, a, a cow that is sick there are um you can use supportive treatment yeah um, and these are antibiotics. Um, any antibiotics, uh, we call them the broad spectrum antibiotics, such as um, the teramycin or oxytetracycline. Yep. Uh, you can use that. And as I've said, that usually if they are infected with this virus, they have got a bit of fever. Mm. So you can use some uh, anti inflammatory uh, drugs, such as phenidine, vetchem, and so forth. Yep. And this normally a farmer gets uh, a prescription thereof. You also need to give it a bit of um, immune boosters, uh, some um, uh, vitamins and minerals mm -hmm. that can also be given, mm -hmm. as well as uh, probiotics. Uh, the common one that they use is Protexin, mm -hmm. that they can find in local um, markets for that. So that is just to support the animal until it recovers. Remember that I've said it's a virus, mm -hmm. so the virus is normally the animal immune, resp immune system should be able to respond towards that and ensure that it recovers from that. And how long does the period of recovery usually take? Um, it depends on the health status of the animal. Right. Um, it, so it ranges uh, between 7 to 14 days. Mm -hmm. It can also go up to 3 months, um, depending that. So it's a really devastating uh, disease. And apart from the signs that one will see, there are also lesions that one can see on the, in the mouth itself. And that makes it very difficult for some animals to eat. And that is, I think, one of the things that normally animals die as a result of starvation yeah. and so forth. Yeah. And it's also, I think, advisable then to then, as an immediate action, to also separate the infected uh, uh, cattle from the ones that are not infected, right? Yeah, during, during treatment, mm -hmm. you would want to isolate the infected animals from the, from the uh, assumed healthy ones. Yes. And um, not only the treatment that I've mentioned, you also need to control the external parasites. Remember that we say 
uh, mosquitoes are one of the main source of uh, assisting in uh, transmission of this disease. So you need to ensure that. But what is so interesting is that, and that is what farmers have really complained, the, 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 the lack of understanding, yeah, yeah. is that as soon as you have got a positive uh, animal, uh, you will see farmers try to go and vaccinate now the healthy looking animals. Uh -huh. Remember that there is also incubation period mm. uh, that normally takes place. In other words, there are anim uh, the virus could already be some of the animals. Mm -hmm. And so if you vaccinate, um, you tend to, after a week or two, you will start seeing some of the animals already showing mm. signs. Mm. And that is because they were already infected. Yeah. It's not that the, va uh, the vaccine is causing the disease, it's mm. just that they were, in the, they were still incubating. So um, in other words, what we are now saying is that please do not wait until you get the disease. Rather vaccinate and vaccinate early. Prevention is better than Prevention cure. Prevention is better than cure. Yeah, so you try to do that. Do not wait until the disease is start knocking uh, just behind your door and then you start now rushing. Mm. It might be late for one to vaccinate. So vaccinate, don't wait. If you are hearing that it's not yet in your area, rush there and just try to start vaccinating because it will eventually reach there. We are hoping that perhaps maybe during winter, yeah. uh, this disease, uh, the outbreak might reduce. Mm -hmm. But remember, as we said, the initial outbreak started in June. It was during winter. So we can't really hope on that. Absolutely. Doctor, very, very important conversation that you brought us this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Of course, hope to speak to you more as uh, these cases perhaps develop and also uh, if, if new updates also come or arise. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you.